Fish disease affects the survival and growth of rates of fish under culture. Given that drug treatment are expensive, fish disease invariably leads to lower harvests and higher costs. Fish farmers often suffer hefty economic losses due to fish disease. To alleviate such losses, it is crucial to take precaution to prevent fish disease and reduce pathogen levels in water bodies. It is also important to prevent water quality from deteriorating and to strengthen the natural resistance of the fish stock. Regular monitoring of fish health is an active way to identify disease and appropriate treatment. One major cause of serious fish kills is overlooking the contagiousness of fish disease and towards the main treatments. As such, adequate care and treatment should be given to infected promptly. This is Aqua Farming on your first agricultural TV station. My name is Joshua Isha, your usual guide. And today, we'll be looking at the diseases that usually hamper the production of fish. Stay tuned. Diseases can cause serious problems on fish farms. They may decimate fish stock or make a farmer's product unmarketable. The discovery of exotic disease on fish farms can trigger huge financial losses associated with state and federal quarantine and fish eradication. Farmers who can document the health status of their fish have a competitive advantage with customers and regulators who recognize the benefits of a safer product. These advantages can be realized by fairly simple changes in farm management practices that help prevent the introduction and spread of disease. Fish disease caused by parasites, bacteria or viruses can be spread from ponds to ponds or from farm to farm by the transfer of infected fish and by animals. People, equipment and water contaminated by contact with infected fish or fish pathogens to prevent the introduction of new diseases into a fish farm. There should be no contact between the fish on the farm and any potential disease carriers. Farm equipment should be clean and disinfected before each use. Workers should disinfect clothing, booths, and other gear before having contact with healthy fish. Sanitation is particularly important in preventing the spread of disease between ponds or vast when sick or fish are present. Wild fish from other farms and fish returned to the farm after being handled off farm can carry diseases. Fish should be inspected for known disease at either the lot or farm level by a fish health professional before they are brought onto the farm. If possible, new or returned fish should be quarantined in ponds or facility as far as practical from the rest of the farm. No fish or water should be allowed to escape from quarantine facilities. The equipment used in quarantine facilities should not be moved to non-quarantine areas until it has been disinfected. A quarantine period must last until the fish are exposed to the full range of seasonal water temperature at which any disease of concern can be detected. For example, quarantining fish at winter 
water temperature to protect against a disease that occurs only at warm water temperature is not as effective strategy. The spring varemia of cap virus occurs at water temperature of 10 to 18 degrees centigrade. So a new cap or goldfish stock must be quarantined at cool water temperature so that varina of cap virus carries can be de Detected. A well to the point water that is recycled or reused on the farm for different badges of fish is not likely to be source of new diseases, but it may enable existing pathogens to accumulate in the air in either the fish or in intermediate holes held in the reuse pond water. River water is the least desirable source of water for fish farming because it is likely to contain pathogens not already present in the fish farm. If river water must be used, pump, pump it through a fine filter and hold it in a fresh, free fish pond for at least 21 days before using it. This will interrupt the life cycle of parasite that cannot survive without a suitable fish host. Holding fish free water in a reservoir before use will also give an bacteria or viral pathogens into the deteriorated in the absence of a suitable host specialized water treatment facilities that incorporate ozone treatment and ultraviolet light sterilization process can be used to disinfect river water. However, this technology is expensive and it's economically feasible only if the farmer is producing only if the farmer is producing feasible high value fish products the safest water for fish production is water pump straight dropping birds can also drop fish from one body of water into another several species of fish eating birds can carry the life stages of parasite tramadols or grubs that infest snails in cultural ponds and then develop into parasite of fish. To reduce this problem, use the most effective legal means of discouraging birds from, vis from visiting farms, ponds. Talk about this with your local animal control specialist. Controlling snails is beneficial where tramadols are a problem for the fish species being cultured where on off the farm. This is especially critical for equipment that have been used to handle harvest or transport sick fish. It is important to know that some disinfectants will not work effectively in the presence of dirt and organic matter such as fish mokus. Equipment must be thoroughly scrubbed clean with a brush and detergent and then rinse to remove any dirt and detergent residue. Then an appropriate Primate disinfectants should be applied and left on equipment long enough to kill disease organisms. Rinsing after disinfection ensures that no residues are left behind. Drying equipment in the sun will destroy bacteria or viruses that may have survived. The choice of chemical cleaner or disinfectants is critical. Consider the type of disease organisms you are trying to control and type of equipment you are disinfecting as well as the cost and safety of the chemical methods of cleaning and disinfecting as shown. Fish disease are easily transferred on wet, slim laden or muddy equipment. In fact, exposing fish to fresh slim is almost as risk, risky as exposing them to new fish. Drying equipment so that seems before each use kills many fish pathogens. Better yet, Use warm water and detergent to clean equipment such as buckets, boots, weathers and vehicles and then dry them. Transport trucks and other vehicles can be cleaned easily with a high pressure hose at the local car wash. For the best results in killing pathogens, you must clean, disinfect and dry equipment before it is used. Some viruses may be killed easily by detergent alone while others are very hard to kill, except with very specific disinfectants. Some bacteria found in recirculating aquaculture system, which cause fish handless disease, are also known hard to kill. 
Most detergent resistant bacteria and viruses can be killed with a single broad spectrum disinfectant such as sodium hydroxide, a strong alkali, formalin, and aldehyde chlorine, iodine, or peroxide products. Many parasites are relatively easy to destroy with disinfectants. However, some parasites such as the myxosia produce pores that are difficult to inactivate. Other parasites including many monogenia crustacea produce eggs that can be resistant to many disinfectant parasites. Usually can physically remove by thoroughly scrubbing equipment, soaking the clean equipment in formalin or a pro proxide product will kill most types of parasite that may still be present soaking is a very effective way to decontaminate nets and air stones which are hard to scrub clean the best way to disinfect pond is to dry them and treat them with hydrated lime to kill some parasite and their intermediate hosts aquatic fungi produce motile zoospores which are susceptible to most disinfectant except during a brief period of ecosystem. It is important to consider the safety and handling limitation of the chemicals used for cleaning and disinfectants. Remember some chemical agents may be harmful to the use or to fish may leave toxic residues or damage equipment. Some agents such as iodine, stain equipment, others like hypochlorite are corrosive to metals and netting and well being toxic to fish, it is possible to neutralize hypochlorite with sodium thiosulfate. Consult with your fish health specialist to determine the best choice of cleaning and disinfecting agent to use on your farm. Some basic guidelines are provided. In summary, prevent disease by scrubbing equipment with warm soapy water and then dry the equipment thoroughly before reuse. Clean rinse and dry trucks seen and other equipment used for fish from another facility or fish from the wild applying a broad spectrum disinfectant to clean equipment gives further protection to your fish stock now let's look at five sanitation and disease prevention practices for a proper fish pond now let's look at five sanitation and disease prevention practices number one inspect the stalk farm fish can come from different places they can be wild come from other farms or get returned after being handled off farm regardless of where they come from it is crucial to inspect each fish for disease either at the lord or farm level a term fish health professional should carry out these ex exams as they will know even the slightest signs of potential enals to ensure it does not get introduced to healthy fish. Taking things a step further, you should set up a quarantine area for new and returning fish, either a pond or a designated area. No fish or water in the quarantine area should escape into areas housing healthy fish. Any equipment should remain away from these areas until they are thoroughly disinfected and sanitized. A proper quarantine period for fish should take them through each seasonal water temperature so that a potential disease gets overlooked. Number two, clean and disinfect equipment and clothes. Bacteria and other harmful pathogens can cling to clothing, boots and equipment. It is vital that workers clean and sanitize their work clothes and boots at the end of each day, especially if they have been working with quarantined fish. Taking care to sanitize clothing will help prevent the introduction and spread of harmful pathogens. The same is necessary with all equipment, as that equipment is one of the main culprits of contamination on fish farms. Buckets, weathers, transport trucks, and much more all require proper cleaning, sanitation, and drying before the next use prevent the introduction of pathogens and disease. Number three, let fishing net dry. Aside from the more obvious equipment, there are fishing nets. 
They are vital to the function of fish farms. These nets can carry countless pathogens that can contaminate a fish farm, especially if not handled properly. Ideally, you should invest in many nets so that once workers use one, they can use another while that one gets cleaned and dried. Doing so will kill many pathogens and ensure that the nets do not become moldy. Number 4. Use the right water. For fish farms, the safest water source is water that you pump straight from a designated well or pond by recycling and reusing water for each new batch of fish. The risk of water becoming contaminated with new diseases is greatly minimized. That doesn't mean that the pathogens can be present and accumulate in the water over time, especially as you circulate and reuse it for each batch. For all the possible water sources for fish farms, river water is the least desirable as it can contain pathogens that aren't already present within the fish farm. To use river water, you need to send it through a filtration system and then store it in fish. Three points for a minimum of 21 days to ensure that no harmful pathogens contaminate the farms. Number 5. Install Sanitary Drainage one feature of a sanitary fish farm you should never overlook is drainage. Drainage systems are a vital part of creating a safe and sanitary facility. This system takes water runoff away from the ground surface and direct it to a specified area like a catch basin or other holding area. Food safe drains makes the slow drain system. An individual and industrial strength ideal for fish farms. The 10,000 series slot drain features a bacteria and corrosion resistant stainless steel body inset in concrete, making it flush with the ground, unlike traditional trench drains. Slot drains have a steam channel opening, eliminating the need for gate covers, as large objects will not fall into the channel. The system are also easy to maintain, with options like flush floor to help the cleaning or clean and place system to outmate it entirely. Now, making safe seafood. The popularity of seafood isn't slowing down anytime soon. So to protect the world sea life from the effects of overfishing solution like aquaculture and fish farm are necessary. For this system to work, however, they require the utmost care to ensure there is no disease present which can harm the supply and lead to serious health safety issues. As a fish farm manager, you must do everything you can to maintain a sanitary disease-free facility and these farm tips are the perfect steering point. The Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria ASCN coordinates the activities of research institutes and is responsible for supervision, regulation, coordination of research activities and programs of higher institutions in Nigeria. I'm Professor Hamid Sharmatu since assumption as Executive Secretary of ASCN in April 2020 has solidified the transformation of agriculture in Nigeria through strategic and meaningful execution of research fundings for improvement of the agricultural sector. Uh, agricultural Research Council of Nigeria. Uh, we have succeeded in um, bringing about 32 institutions under this organization. Each of them headed by an executive director or a provost. Uh, the provost have the same condition of service and uh, service condition like uh, any vice chancellor or rector in this uh, place. And then the executive directors have equal powers uh, or equal status with me. Uh, it's just that I am supervising them. So they are equivalent to any permanent secretary. So, so this is who we are. But of interest to you um, is uh, the number of institutions that cover veterinary related activities. Uh, actually, all the colleges of agriculture have um, a training program in uh, animal health and production technology. Uh, some have strictly animal health, 
some have animal production. The rubber tree has two major outputs that are useful in the industrial sector as well as other uses. These include the white liquid substance taps from the rubber tree, which is called latex, and the rubber seeds that are produced from the rubber trees. After the liquid is tapped from the rubber, it can be sold in its liquid form or processed into rubber sheet. To achieve standard of processing of rubber liquid into a more profitable form, the Rubber Research Institute of Nigeria has a rubber latex processing section. Here is a pilot plant set up by the Rubber Research Institute to encourage through demonstration the value chain addition of our produce. Okay. Usually when you tap rubber from the field, as I'm very, very sure you guys have seen earlier today, it is processed into raw materials that can be consumed by would-be manufacturers who are interested in using natural rubber as a base raw material. For grains, we have the parabolic solar dryers. These are specialized solar dryers used for drying agricultural produce such as whole grains, yam and cassava chips, fruits and vegetables more efficiently. It is made of a special material that concentrates the rays of the sun within the enclosure while eliminating harmful ultraviolet radiation. Products dried are free from contaminants and are hygienic. The parabolic shaped solar dryer is a need-based technology because virtually when we travel all over the country, you will see by the roadside, you see people drying all sorts of agricultural produce. Some spread their own on beer ground, and by the time the vehicles are moving, the race dust, the dust stay on the product. The reptiles will come, they will hit whatever they can hit, drop their, uh, their feces and their urine on it. And the owner comes in the evening to pack everything together and still eat that product. And the product has been contaminated and we feel this is not right. And it is part of our mandate to make sure that we set it right. And that is was what led to this, so that we can solve this problem at the grassroots level. Instead of drying by the roadside, drying on just bare ground in their villages, when they have this at the, as a drying center, everybody in the community can bring their product there, spread on the tray, and they get it dry under hygienic condition that is covered. And the dryer also have another property to screen the ultraviolet ray of the sun, which is also uh, can cause hazard to human health. Welcome to the Federal College of Land Resources Technology, Kuru, Jos, Plateau State. The Atomic Absorption Spectrophotometer, AFS, is an instrument which is used for the determination of metals that are dissolved in source. Welcome to production farms where we are going to take you around our production tanks and the practical fisheries and integrated farms to integrate the farming system with a banana and plantain and so many aquatic animals. Uh, students 
and the other uh, youths and women within the community. And this, we, in the aspect of training, we have two aspects of the fisheries, fisheries and aquaculture. The fisheries aspect is the way to catch a fish, like a processing aspect, the catching aspect, and then when we come to the agriculture aspect, it's the breeding and then the production unit. Uh, you know, in every aspect of uh, agriculture se uh, sector, you need to have a seat. So the college here, our mandate is to train how to produce a fish seat, that is the fingerlings. And also, not only uh, the fish, fing fingerling production also, we also aid in producing manpower from different aspects of the community, different communities. Fisheries School Baga is a very long uh, standard, it's established in 1978, of which for me, let me this use of opportunity to say that I'm also a part and parcel of this college because I graduated from this college <laughs> and that college, the college is more or less of entrepreneurship of the college where when a, a student leaves the college at least can stand by itself. Now as we are talking about, the federal college, the federal government is now talking about Fish, food, uh, fish security, uh, food security. So once, if you come out from this college graduate, you can be able to at least maintain our training and then also stand by yourself, safe employment. The Cultural Research Council of Nigeria is worried a new look on that stewardship of Professor Garba Hamidu Sharbutu, who says, alone, I am nothing, but together, I am something. ARCN Promoting Agriculture Fish disease prevention is fundamental for sustainability of aquaculture. Legislation is the cornerstone in disease prevention, while vaccination is the single most important preventive measure. Finally, the authorities and the industry must be well organized and have the right competence on all levels. With that, we come to the end of the program Aqua Farming. As we talked about fish diseases, see you same time, same station. Bye for now.